Hey guys, just wanted to make a video today to kind of show you uh, how to set up your your radio and uh, your Eosheen Wizard X220 after you update to Betaflight 3.1.0 because it'll blank out your settings and maybe you just don't have your radio set up uh, the best way you could. Obviously this might not be the best way but it's definitely a way that has helped me uh, so share with you what I've learned. First things first, you want to make sure you do not have any blades installed on your quadcopter because if this thing goes crazy, it can really seriously hurt you. So just make sure there's no uh, no blades installed. Uh, you're going to need the battery for this because uh, you do need to f uh, power on the transmitter to talk to the receiver. So have the battery ready and uh, have your USB cable and uh, plug it in. We'll go over setting up the remote first. So with the remote, uh, with the radio, you turn it on. Let me get a zoom in action. And the uh, first thing you want to do is hold the on button and you'll get this menu and we're going to start with system which is uh, where it has the, the square around it right now. So you scroll down to RX setup, PPM output and make sure that PPM is on. Now I made the mistake of buying this with the FSI6A transmitter to begin with and it does not work with this quad. Um, I ended up having to turn around and order the FSIA6B which has these antennas these, um, and uh, it worked perfectly after I did that so I'll put a link in the description so if you're having problems configuring that may be your issue make sure you don't have the cheaper crappier one so in order to save your setting you hit and hold cancel and it goes back All right. And then you want to set up your failsafe. Hit OK. And uh, we're going to use channel 3 and 5. I already have mine set up, but I'll show you how to do it. So this needs to be plugged in for this to work. Ah. OK. So. Let me zoom out here just a little. Make sure you have your quadcopter on, because apparently talking to the transceiver, I mean, the, yeah, the transceiver is what makes this function. We'll configure channel 3 first. You want to make sure this is all the way down. That puts that to 100%. Then we'll go to channel 5 and flip this down and hit OK. And uh, that's going to be your fail-safe switch channel 5. And then we'll hit we'll hold control to save it. And we'll go back two screens. Go to assist the function setup, hit OK. Then your aux channel. We're gonna set channel 5 to SWD, which is this switch. So channel 5 will be this switch. Hit OK, and then channel 6 be SWA, which is this switch. Alright, then hold cancel to go back. Alright, and that's all you need to do to configure your radio. Set that aside, and we'll go to the computer. Go ahead and switch over to Betaflight now. So the first thing you want to do is click connect with it plugged in um, by the USB. And uh, I already have mine a little bit set up, but first thing you'll notice is if you pick up your quad, yours probably won't move the right direction. So when I tilt to the right, it goes to the right. When I tilt up, it's going down. 
something's not right. So that's good. Get to fix that. Just, uh, the first tab is ports, and there's nothing to do here. Just leave it as is if you have the FlySky FSI 6. If you're using a Tyrannus, there's a whole different setup, and this video does not cover that. So just uh, look that up elsewhere, and there's tons of information available for you. Go to configuration, and uh, first thing you want to do is enter 270 right here for the yaw. Uh, also, under system configuration, you can set it to 4 kilohertz and 2 kilohertz. Uh, these settings are recommended by Joshua Bardwell, and it provides you uh, greater speed and updating for the gyro and for the PID frequencies. And uh, it's highly recommended to do so. I went ahead and did it. You want to enable the black box because you actually have some black box data storage on the Wizard 220, and it can help you figure out information like if you have problems with your motors and whatnot, it records flight information you can go back later. I currently do not turn air mode on. Um, I tried it. I didn't really fly with it. I'll try it again later, but basically in a nutshell, what air mode does is it allows you to have some type of throttle response even though your throttle is on idle. So if you if you drop this down all the way and you're still trying to turn, it still allows you to turn in the air with having this at zero. Um, but the reason I don't use it right now is uh, just trying to hover. It um, <laughs> It's hard to do. Uh, it's hard to land. It kind of bounces you around and not quite sure. I'll, I'll enable that when I'm ready for it, but right now I'm just going to leave it off. Escapes, I have this set at one shot 125. This is the recommended setting. Uh, you can do multi shot with Wizard X220, but uh, it's kind of shaky and unstable, and it's recommended just to do one shot, especially if you're just beginning. So I changed these values under, again, a recommendation from Joshua Bardwell for his config for the Wizard X220. And I think it works fine. So it's a 1035, 1990, and 1000. The 1000 was uh, the standard value, but these two had a little bit of change. Didn't change anything else. All right, so moving on to failsafe. Um, it's recommended you change throttle to hold. And the reason is if you lose radio frequency with your, uh, if, you, if, there, if there's an interruption in the radio frequency, then with this set at auto, it, your quad will instantly stop and just fall out of the sky. If you have this set to hold and you set this to say, 10 for the guard time, 10 uh, equals one second. So you have one second of radio brownout or transmission interruption before it actually just falls out of the sky. So it's recommended to set it at five for a half a second. So I'll do that and I'll click save and reboot. I like to save and reboot frequently while doing this. And also, it's pointed out that this says land. It does not work. It does not land. It, it, it'll just make your quad just fall out of the sky. So don't select it. Select drop. All right, PID tuning. I didn't change this at all. This is default values. Like I said, I'm new. And uh, it's aggressive enough just trying to learn it right now. So I'll, I'll start fooling with this when I become a better pilot. All right, as for the receiver, AETR, I believe, is what you want. But what you do is you turn on your remote and you plug in the wizard. Because uh, these are transceiver values from the receiver. And you basically push up on the stick. Throttle should go up. Press down, it should go down. Turn right, you should get yaw right, yaw left. And you can also see 
the picture of the quad spinning in the appropriate direction. And then uh, pull back should flip upwards like that. And push forward should, should, should flip forward. And then uh, right and left should uh, roll. So all those look like they're functioning properly. So that's what we want. All right, move on to modes. Now I already have this set up, but I will delete them to show you what it looks like. So first one you want to set is arm. Instead of holding down and right to arm your quad, uh, this is why we set up these switches earlier. You want it to be aux one for this switch, and that should move on the screen. So that is on. I mean that is off the off value. So I'll move this bar all the way to the right, and then when I flip this switch, now it arms the quad. The, the benefit of this is if you wreck or if anything happens, you can just flip that switch and your quad will instantly turn off. So that's really good. And then we're going to also add angle, make this aux 2, and I'm going to try setting it here. I'm not positive if this is the right way, uh, but this basically flips your quad, your quad between angle mode, which is stabilized, and uh, acro mode. So right now, I want this to be stabilized to begin with. A lot of people have this flipped because uh, they fly in acro mode all the time, and they're great pilots, and uh, they want to leave it like this. And then if they get into trouble and they need, they need it to stabilize, they'll switch this button. But for me, I want to start and stabilize a little bit, and I'll work my way up to acro so uh, if I switch it you see it turns off so that's on all right I'm gonna save my settings and I'm sure there's like lots of other switches you can assign and everything else but this is the basics just to get you started all right I don't mess with adjustments right now nothing for servos motors I thought this was cool so I'll just show this I like doing this um, the cool thing about motors is you can slide this over and then you can slide this master and then the motors will spin and then if you wanted to test them individually like you thought you might have a problem with one you can spin the motors slowly and increase the speed I'll go away dog So that's cool. And here's black box. Uh, I don't know exactly what it does yet, but um, and then CLI you could import settings. So that's basically it. Uh, once you leave CLI, it reboots. So that was that. That's what that noise was. So that's the basic settings right there that I use. Um, one day I'll get into tuning this a little better and adding possibly more uh, configuration to it and uh, yeah so if you like what I'm doing here on this channel and uh, like the videos I'm providing the information I'm trying to help put out there uh, please give this video a thumbs up and like and subscribe it really helped me out till next time see you later thanks